The Rainbow Pajama Pillow is the perfect practice project for machine knitters. While you practice how to decrease using a garter bar, you will find the video chock full of tips too. Follow the instructions in the description below to download the Rainbow Pajama Pillow pattern for free. Cast on 110 stitches on scrap yarn and knit a few rows. Set the row counter to zero. Then thread the machine with pink, the first color, and knit 18 rows. Thread a darning needle or a double-eyed needle with one of the 8-inch pieces of matching yarn. I usually start on the left side first. Notice every other row is a loop or a knot. Pick up the loops of the end stitches and pull the end through. Bring both yarn ends to the center and tie a secure knot. I like to use an overhand knot wrapped once, followed by an overhand knot wrapped twice, and then another overhand knot wrapped once. You can leave these yarn ends to the inside as additional stuffing. Now go over to the right side and pick up the end loops as you did before with the second 8 inch piece of yarn. And once again tie a secure knot to close the end of what will become the first tube of the rainbow. After you've closed the tubes, return to the first row of pink and using your transfer tool begin to rehang the stitches to the needles. You are picking up the U part of the stitch. After hanging six to eight stitches, stuff softly with fiber fill. You don't want to go further than the length of a finger to ensure even stuffing. Because we have already closed the tube ends, it's easier to finish stuffing in the middle of the needle bed. So when you get near to the right side, start hanging stitches and stuffing from the right. But remember, there is one less U-loop on the first row than on the needles. So when you start hanging from the right side, hang the first U-loop on the second needle. After all the stitches are rehung on the needles and the tube is stuffed, make sure all the needles are in E position and help the carriage along by squishing the tube with your left hand as you knit one row. You've just closed the tube. You can now remove the scrap yarn. Quickly weave in the yarn end by pulling out 10 to 15 needles to E position. Wrap the yarn tail over the end needle and under the next needle. Continue over and under for at least 10 needles or until the tail runs out. I like to put a clothespin on the dangling end to keep a slight tension on it while knitting the next row. Knit five more rows. These are the background rows between the color tubes of the rainbow. When the row counter reaches 24, you can cut the yarn. You're finished with the first color. On the last row of each color, we will decrease 14 evenly across the row using the garter bar. First, pull all the working needles to E position with the stopper plate of the garter bar set. Then, position the stopper plate over the needle butts and gate pegs. You'll need both sides for the first band. Push the knitting back to the stopper plate. Make sure the latches are open by using a cut off plastic card. With the ridge side facing up, place the garter bar eyelets on the needle hooks and hold the garter bar even with the needles. Keeping a little tension on the garter bar, pull the knitting from below onto the garter bar. 
Make sure all the stitches have transferred successfully and remove the garter bar from the needles. On the first color, we will be working from left to right. For this exercise, I like to lift up the right stopper plate and take 14 needles out of work on the end and then replace the stopper plate. This way I know when I have completed the decreasing. Once again, use your plastic card to make sure the latches are open. Now, put the garter bar back on the needles aligning the stitches at the left to the needle on the left. Place the eyelets of the garter bar onto the needles then elevate the garter bar slightly, keeping the eyelets in the hooks. Push the first 10 stitches on the left to the needles. Angle the garter bar down slightly and remove the garter bar. Let's take a closer look. Then realign the garter bar one needle to the left so that two stitches will be on one needle. Replace the garter bar on the needles and push the next seven stitches to the needles from the garter bar. Repeat this all the way across the needle bed. When the stitches on the garter bar match the number of needles in work, push the remaining stitches onto the needles. You've just decreased 14 evenly across the row. Just remember, this is a practice project for decreasing with a garter bar. If you decreased a few too many or not so evenly, no worries. No one will see it as the decreases are buried between the rainbow bands. Just keep going and adjust on the next decrease row. Before you go on, weave the yarn tail over and under 10 to 15 needles on the right. Remove the stopper plate and repeat the process for the next band. Except, when you begin the decreases, alternate the side where you start. This time we'll start from the right. Because the number of stitches decrease with each band, two things happen. Number one, the project goes faster and faster with each color. And number two, the frequency the decreases change. Follow the instructions in the video description to download the pattern for free and to get all the decrease details. Then repeat to form the yellow, mint, baby blue, and blue tubes. Continue to make the violet tubes, but do not knit the extra six rows of background. After the violet tube is closed, with the carriage on the left, increase the stitch size two full sizes and knit one row. Working from left to right, bind off using the loop through loop method. Cut the yarn and leave a 15 inch yarn tail and pull it through the last loop. When the rainbow comes off the machine there is only one yarn tail and look how neatly the tubes are all closed. Now make a second rainbow same as the first. Now for the assembly. You could simply center and hand sew the zipper into place along the line of demarcation that's the line along the outer band where the knit stitches turn into purl stitches. But knitting two facings makes the job even easier. With the same color as the outer band, work a crochet cast on over 110 needles. This is the same number of stitches in the outer band. Knit three rows 
which equals a half inch based on the gauge. Change to a contrasting scrap yarn and knit a few more rows and remove the first facing from the machine. Repeat this process for the second facing. Let the facings relax for a few hours or overnight. Measure the line of demarcation by walking the tape measure along the edge. Mine measured 32 inches from end to end. Pin the facings out on a blocking board to the measured length, that's the 32 inches, and steam the facings to set the stitches. And then measure the zipper. Although it is a 22 inch zipper from end to end, it actually measures about 24 inches. Apply the sticky side of Dritz 1 quarter inch wash away wonder tape along the side edge of the right side of the zipper. Slide your finger along the edge to help the tape adhere to the zipper. When you reach the end, trim the tape even with the end of the zipper. The Wonder Tape is a double-sided tape, so now peel back the paper from the top to expose its stickiness. To center the zipper, calculate the difference between the facing length and the zipper. 32 minus 24 leaves 8 inches. This means the facing should extend 4 inches on each end of the zipper. Press the facing onto the sticky tape along the side of the zipper. Start with the ends and make sure that the cast on edge of the facing is centered over the zipper teeth. Then press the center into place and ease in the rest of the facing along the zipper edge. Using matching thread, stitch the zipper into place about a quarter inch from the zipper teeth. You can do this with a sewing machine or by hand. Repeat the whole process to attach the second facing to the other side of the zipper. Since you have 110 stitches on both the facing and the line of demarcation, it's a perfect stitch to stitch match with no easing necessary. Starting at one end with a crochet hook or latch tool, insert the hook into the first stitch of the line of demarcation on the outer border. And then, holding the zipper so you see the purl side of the facing, insert the hook into the first stitch of the facing along the scrap yarn and pull a loop through both thicknesses to join with a slip stitch. Let's take a closer look. Notice how you pick up the stitch from the line of demarcation and a corresponding stitch from the facing. Then complete the slip stitch. Look how nice that looks from both sides. Here's what it looks like when you work along the edge of the zipper. You will repeat this all the way to the end of the arch. Make sure to leave a 15 inch yarn tail for later use. Once you're all done with the side, you can remove the scrap yarn. Align the other side of the zipper to the second rainbow at the line of demarcation and slip stitch it together the same way. Make sure the zipper is not twisted. I like to start with the zipper closed to ensure that it aligns properly. Then, once it's started, you can open the zipper for easier handling. With the leftover yarn tails, Kitchener the two facings together just past the ends of the zippers on both ends. For the Kitchener, you insert the needle under a stitch on one side, cross over to the other side, 
and go in the same place where you came out of earlier. Catch one or two threads with each stitch. Go back and forth in this manner until you get up to the zipper. For this project, I want my Kitchener stitches to be firm. To do so, every few inches, pull the yarn up tightly to close the stitches. Once the zipper side is completely seamed, whip stitch the violet bands together at the bottom using a violet yarn tail. It's quick and easy and no one will see the seam anyway. This side is also sewn together using available yarn tails. First, pinch the end of the zipper facings together and whip or backstitch them to close it. This will not be seen, just push them to the inside. Then, align the background rows between the tubes. You will not sew the tubes together, just the background rows. Draw the yarn end to the outside and join this side together using the mattress stitch. The mattress stitch is very similar to the Kitchener stitch, except it joins the selvage edges of the knitting. When you cross the opening, make sure to insert the needle where you just came out. Every few inches, pull the seaming yarn up tightly and the contrasting colored yarn will simply disappear. Look how neat the bottom seams are. Everything just matches up so nicely. Now all you need are a few unicorns. Hi, I'm Mary Matz, creator of Twisted Yarns. Thank you for watching my video. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos. Happy machine knitting!